wedging or clustering, or what that means. Um, but basically, a wedge is something in Houdini which resembles iterations. Or basically, you can do iterations of either an asset or iterations over a whole environment. So when it comes to large scale stuff, this comes in really, really handy. So to begin, let's imagine we have a height field because it's usually very nice to explain this on height fields. And height fields are usually like one kilometer wide and they are very big pieces of geometry. So we convert this, um, convert this to a height field uh, to a geometry, we can see that we have a lot of polygons and the space, if we add a, a pommy, you see, it's very big. In fact, I cannot even see Tommy over here. Very, very big. There we go. See? So, imagine you want to do, let's say, uh, after adding a little bit of noise to this height field, let's add a simple noise over here. You want to add maybe some trees. So, that's easy. You don't need a wedge for this at the very beginning. But we could do a simple noise over here. And I always like to change this to mask and to upload because I don't need much more. With control and middle mouse click, we can see all the, all the attributes and we can actually visualize this. If you see these dots, it's because the scale is extremely, extremely small. By doing this, you can make it look a little bit better. And with D, you can go into background and change this to dark, so we can see this a little bit better. Usually, uh, you always play with the remaps over here. So what I'm trying to do right now is to create some places where I would like to have some trees. So if we place a scatter over here and we set this to the mask, we can have some uh, places where we can create trees. Of course, I'm not going to add trace because this is a, a simple presentation. And yes, Jamil, we are recording this and it will be uh, on the ZG Launch channel right after we finish this. So if we copy it to points, um, if we copy to points this, let's say we want to burn the forest, right? So let's first create the forest. So we can create a couple of, of boxes. Right now they are very small, so let's try to make them a little bit larger. So usually by expanding uh, the axis over here, we can make the boxes. Um, perhaps I would like to have like a little sphere that represents uh, the leaves. So let's place this all the way over here, and this is going to be these are going to be our trees. We have some trees over here, and. After we have this, there are a couple of things we can do before diving in is to, for example, pack an instance. So all the trees are just one singular geometry. This is always nice. And yeah, it is like a branch system. So we could, for example, uh, right now I'm just pre-visualizing this mesh with Ctrl Shift and left click, but I'm going to just show you the trees. Let's say I want to burn like almost everything from the forest. What we could do, if for example, since this is packed, we could unpack all the geometry and we could make it, to make it extremely quick, scatter some points on top of the trees. So let's make, for example, uh, this amount of points. Now we have 100 points here uh, that will be part of our fire simulation or at least smoke. So right now there are no attributes. What I usually like to do, this is a nice trick, is to create the attributes on a simple attribute wrangle. All of these are going to be just floats. So let's do a density equals to one and temperature equals to one. That will mean that if we go into the geometry spreadsheet over here, all of our density and temperature are going to be equals to one. And we can always see this, of course. See, everything is red because everything is one. We can add a little bit of noise with um, the attribute noise. 
And since we already have the basic layer, which is one, what we could do is multiply this. So let's go into density. We know this is a float and we can multiply this with a ramp and something over here. And we can clamp this. And there we have. I would like these spots to be part of my density. And maybe just changing this a little bit. This can be part of my temperature. So there are going to be parts which are just not going to be lit. So let's create an attribute rasterize from attributes. Since this is, remember guys, this is one kilometers long. So the voxel size of 0 0.1 would explode all the machines here. Uh, so let's try to go big. 44 is going to be okay. And let's put density. We only have 1000 voxels, so we can go 22, 11, and probably 5, it's okay. And we have 74,000 voxels, and that, this is even lower. So let's go 2-2. Two, two. Now, something like this should probably work. It's good enough. Let's make it a little bit larger. Let's only visualize the density. And let's also plug in the temperature. So, right now we could start what a size voxel unit represents, one meter? Yeah, one voxel is one meter. So right now our voxels are two meters long. Um, so right now we could potentially, I'm going to just uh, save this real quick, just in case you never know, on the desktop. Presentation. Over here. Okay, so we could potentially start the simulation. So just give it a try. Pyro solver. Make something very quick. And we can see this is already starting to... My PC is going nuts right now. It's already slow. Yeah, it's already slow. This is mainly because of the voxel size. So let's change the voxel size to, let's say, 2. It's going to work. It's going to emit, but I don't like this speed. I usually like to go with my GPU. Uh, this is going to be much faster. But I only have like 26 million voxels in BDB. Of course, uh, we could just not use BDB. I think over here. Okay, no, this setup is just automatically set to BDB. Uh, so what happens here? Uh, it's already slow for just 26 million voxels. Even if I'm not visualizing this, this is extremely slow. I don't like to iterate on these speeds. But let's imagine we do, let's say, half the resolution. Or we are losing quality over here. But at least I can pre-visualize something. We are injecting. I don't know if my voice is sounding OK, because I am simulating while I speak. But we already have temperature and density. That's all there is. I'm not going to do much of um, the Lucas for now because that's not the point of this uh, of this situation. But it's already slow. So how can we improve this? Well, you could think like splitting this into parts. So let's go here. We could just select the points, and this is really quick to test. Okay, how does this look on a smaller scale? Does this simulate faster? Yeah, it simulates incredibly faster. So why can't we make this a little bit more automatic? So I would like to also have this turned on over here with my trace. So how can we make this a little bit faster on our PC? Because if you go into any studio, simulating the whole environment is, they're going to say, tell you, hey, split this into separate simulations. And one thing that we could use is the simplest trick is to just do a grid over here with a match size. And we already have the size, which is this one. Oops. So let's plug the grid into here. And let's scale to fit without a norm, uh, uniform scale because you never know. And this set to mean. Over here, we are going to see with the polygons that we have squares. This could be our which is each of these could be a single simulation. 
Right now, we only want to have four simulations because what we tested is nice enough. But how can we do it automatically? Because that's the thing, uh, to work less and do more. So, first of all, we need to facet this. So, uh, make everything unique. So, I could potentially grab one of these and just move it around. That's nice. <clears throat> and then, what I could do is, for example, a poly extrude. This poly extrude, if we go upwards, I'm oh, sorry, upwards over here, we could cover uh, all the assets involved into the simulation. If we also add a connectivity, we can then get our, our wedges. How? Because we can separate these into class attributes. Each of these boxes will represent one simulation. So this is a thing. Uh, now we need to make it, make it so it's this blast is automatic. But how? How is the, the, the situation? So let's say we want to grab this box. Well, we already have a bounding box. So if we group this, it should basically, if you go into points, this could be a blast. And go into by object. We are selecting this. And if we just blast this by the group blast, ha, huh, we have our, our wedge. That's really nice, but there's still something missing because this is not automatic. So there has to be a way to do it. Over here, we could attribute promote something, and we already know that the class goes from zero to three. So if we promote this to detail and set this to class and this to maximum, here we will have one singular value, which is three. This value will be um, in charge of uh, selecting the amount of total wedges. And something cool if you guys use Labs File Gache, Labs File Gache, is that inside here you have an option called wedging. And automatically we have some points which represent the wedges. We would need to have four. But this value can be detected automatically. How? Well, we could do here. Control C, do detail, open, and between these uh, symbols, which I don't remember the name of because I don't speak English natively, <laughs> uh, we can select the node and we could say, hey, I would like to have double quotes, thank you. <laughs> we could have selected the class. And it will be a, a number one because. Uh, Let's say class is supposed to be three, and over here, I think we need to do a zero. There we go, three. But we need four. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we need to go uh, one more, and now we have four. So look at this, how this number is going to be changing in case we do, let's say we want four. Now we have six. We only need to generate static. So this is already automatic. You see uh, some. So this is already automatic enough. This is very nice. But here, now we need to select this automatically because this already broke. So what we could do is to select class. And over here, we need to do a wedge. This wedge is automatic. I'm going to call it wedge. So we would like to use, when we select the number 0, 1, 2, and 3, I would like to select that wedge. So here, what I need to do, because I already selecting this, is between these packets use Wedge. Right now we are displaying this value inside like a global attribute. And as you can see, the number three is selected. But this should be set to points. This one is taken. There we go. Yeah. So if we start moving and messing around with this, we're going to be selecting different parts of the environment to do simulations. So we are almost done with this basic setup. Uh, well, not that basic, but it's uh, once you learn, it's going to become much easier. So everything here is automatic. We already have the background. I mean, the ground. Uh, we could use some collisions, but I decided not to in this case. Um, right now, we can go over here and see how they look. This is speed is nice. This 
size is not that great, so we could do something more. Um, to make it even faster, we can even go GPU right now because I I wouldn't be I wouldn't dare just to load everything on GPU, but something like this could be doable. So let's do the following. Um, if we want to go GPU, what we need to go is to I'm going to save this. Go to minimal OpenCL. But minimal OpenCL needs a size and a center because it's going to simulate in this small box over here. So we already have the box. We know this is the box. So we can control C and do a simple expression called B box. And we can get um, our bonding box, I mean our box, and then do an expression. In this case, is D underscore X size. You will see that the box is going to, oh, this is insane. This number is very nice. Um, right now we are creating like the same size of the box with X, with Y, and with Z. But we need to center this. Well, that's easy. Centroid. And we should need to copy this over here. And instead of DX size, we say D at X over here. It's not that. And there's core, I think. And we could just paste all the values over here. And over here. So we have the bounding box where we have the sources. And we can go GPU right now. And GPU, I have a 4090. It's going to be very fast when the source loads. Oh, I should also take into consideration that this is limited to a couple of frames. So let's go 240 frames. No cycle. And uh, let's see what happens. Now we can visualize smoke simulations in real time. If you go into edit, we can do the leave parameter display during playback. What does this mean? Is that in any time you can just start to uh, change anything. For example, the disturbance. Let's add 44. You will see nothing really happens uh, because the size is probably very small. So what you get to do is that at least the box cell size over here should be equal or bigger than four. So let's add eight. I think we can start seeing something, maybe 16 over here. And maybe, remember this is very big in scale. Yeah, I think I, I'm visualizing something. Let's add a little bit of turbulence. Let's add 44. And let's add uh, the scale, the size should be, Let's add 44. Yeah, something is going on over here already. Very nice. The box size is extremely low. Maybe it's the visualization. Hold on. Yeah, it's okay. We can go a little bit bigger. Not as for now. So let's try to just pump the simulation a little bit more. Now we have more resolution. And still, real time. And this is large scale. Very, very nice. So, this is only on a singular piece of geometry over here, as you may see. So, we need to save this with a file cache. Remember that with the file cache, we can go into different sections of the, of the mountain and it will just work because we already made it work. So, the way this works is that um, it will be saved if we save into background. But keep in mind that you got to configure this a little bit. I would like to use all the uh, CPU cores minus one, but maybe because I'm recording, I'm going to just use three quarters. And it says one batch at a time. This is turned off because you need to turn this off first, then click here. And that's about it. Now click again into simulation. And I would like to just have 24 frames. That's the only thing. So if I'm not mistaken, I'm not going to lose connection right now, but we could say, for example, the first watch, which is over there, the disk, this should be BDB. I don't want to save everything. Like I don't really care. I just want to smoke. So uh, first, oh, always try to change this. It's just going to look better. 
and I just want the density over here. Nothing else. And one thing to keep in mind is that, oh, it got changed. Uh, but usually when you go into GPU, it's just a uh, normal uh, non-BDB non uh, volumes. Is this BDB? No, it's not. Pyro post-process to make this smaller in size compared to BDB, compared to 16-bit floats, and, well, nothing else because we don't, we're not saving anything. Yeah, see, it says native volumes, and now it says BDB. So this is going to be much easier for the machine to save and to read. So let's just save this real quick. Boom, now we have a simulation over here. Okay, that was extremely fast. So what we can do, uh, since that was extremely fast, let's do 48, and let's just save in background. Now, all of these are going to be opening for each point a singular Houdini file in the background, of course. And they're going to be uh, saving into disk, if you go here, all the simulations. As you can see, right now we have the version 0, which is saving. I think it's loading. That's because it's opening a new file. There, it got saved. And then it should potentially open a new one and go into the second one, the third one, and so on and so forth. Uh, let's do a couple of them. Just to double check. Once one finishes, it goes into the green button with the next one. See, it started the second one and it finished because it's super fast. It takes more time opening the file than actually simulating with GPU. So um, over here, what we can do is to load all the wedges. And right now we can see we have two wedges already loaded to 48 frames. Now three. See, it's slowly saving into disk separately. And with a decent resolution. And this is not, well, it's not really decent. It's kind of meh. But for the sake of this presentation, it's okay. So let's see if you see everything starting to load. So let's, we're going to wait just a tiny bit. So everything is loaded into the scene. Um, the only issue we have with this is that right now we don't have interactions between the edges. Uh, that's a limitation of this method. But then again, if you're going to have like a camera over here, you will never notice something like that going on. So it's um, there are some pros and some cons of this method. The pros is that you can go as high resolution as you want. Like there's no doubt about it. There we go, we have all the simulations. And it was super quick, super quick. And if we want to change something, we could just iterate it on a singular wedge and then just translate this to all the other files. So, so far, did you guys understand what this is meant for? What do you think about this overall workflow? Because this can be applied to pretty much anything. Um, this is based on, oops, this is based on a grid and that's it but we can do something else uh, for example let's say let's say we have a box and this box can be used with a Voronoi fracture with some scatter and let's say we have 100 points okay it is this faster after all seems saved and reload and doing one long save with a wedging or the strong points is for iteration. Uh, this is faster. This is definitely faster to read and to save. And if you are on a very big project where you have like to do a, um, let's say a scatter and you want to save per chance, uh, we are talking about potential hours you're going to be saving. And in fact, you will run upon limitations because if you wanted to do all of these simulations, but let's say uh, three times the the resolution, I don't know if you could, but you you can if you divide everything and you are consistent about it. Um, so that's the real benefit. You can go to cinema quality um, resolutions without losing uh, speed. I use this all the time. 
I use it all the time. And it's an incredible uh, technique for water seams. I still haven't used it, but uh, let's say over here, let's say, imagine we have a shore uh, over here where we have the water running all the way. And we divide this into separate chunks. This is the one, this is the two, and this is the third. What you would like to do, I think this is already incorporated into Houdini, but anyways, you could do it with a tool like this, is to simulate the first one and have like loading, when you load the second one, you can load a little bit of the first one, like this little chunk, and this part is going to be like a blend, and the same thing is going to happen with the third, and you have like a full shore. Maybe this is like, you need to use 80 gigabytes of RAM just to do this singular simulation. So there's no way in the world, at least you have like 256 gigabytes uh, of RAM that you would be able to do this. And try to iterate on that is going to be insanely difficult. So uh, with this type of solutions, you can go infinitely. You, you can expand infinitely, to be fair. Um, so there are other type of scenarios where perhaps you want to do some RBD. <coughs> so let's say I have boxes like this. Uh, let's make this 100 times bigger. We have boxes uh, that will be over here that will be scattered or let's just copy and paste some of them. So let's just do a simple transform over here. I want one box to be here. And I would like to have another box to be all the way over there. Imagine this is a giant spaceship with 10,000 pieces and explosions and RVD. <laughs> it is not, but imagine that. So what we could do is to do a custom wedge. So uh, what does it mean? It is going to be based on attributes. So in this case, we have I at... ID, well, not ID, but wedge equals to zero. And over here we have one. So if we visualize this, we can see we have two colors, which represent two different uh, simulations that we would like to have. So how can we adapt this workflow? Uh, the way to adapt this is pretty much super simple. We need this wedge. We need to also promote this uh, wedge value over here to detail and this set to maximum, exactly the same. We have one, so in this case, if we go right now, this is connected to this promote. So we could, we just need to change over here and now it's going to be connected to the other one. And instead of class, it's going to be wedge. And right now, this is already wedged. And over here, we could just copy over here and blast everything that's not uh, wedge. And in this case, if we go into the first one, we delete one. So, RVD solver. Here, we need a collision geometry. So what I would like to do is to uh, resample this. I to resample right here because I don't really need to have so much resolution. So we could go twice. Is it? I'm going to do the way around. Yeah, it should be like this, or even like this. There we go. Now we only have a couple of thousands of polygons. If we Convert this over here. Okay. Only 15,000 polygons. So we could do, use this as a collision geometry after a volume extrude. And we could potentially reduce this even more, even more, like to 10. So this is our, uh, our geometry for the collisions. This is the cube we have. Oh, and we need the collisions to be concave. There we go. And there it is. That's one simulation. So let's just 
because this is very large scale increase the increase the what it is mm -mm -mm. increase this by 10 there we go you shouldn't do this you should always try to go real scale so right here let's just instead of pdb go bgo this is going to be cash a test uh oh this is going to be rbd we could cash the first one this is already cash. Okay, we could do the second one. And we could load all wedges. Right? And we have two different simulations. Okay, let's just go to 128 instead. So let's save this one. And let's save the other one. Now, uh, as I said in my video, which I uploaded yesterday on my channel, um, imagine we have 100 buildings and you want to destroy a whole city and you don't want to simulate all the buildings at the same time. Well, this is the solution. This is the solution. You just simulate one at a time. So you can see the potential. So right now that we already know um, this setup, I want to present you the tool that I use real quick, which is the SOP wedging tool. This tool was built with a lot of love and can be accessed on my Patreon. And it's basically all of these setups, but inside a little box. So uh, let's go into the height field noise and the convert height fields. Uh, let's say I want to divide, I want to do the same over here. So we have the scatter, we have the temperature, and over here. So we could just go here, and it will automatically has our wedge is set up for us. We could go three by three. We do have a couple of bounding boxes. For example, for the outside is the green one that we can increase. This will bleed into other sections. This actually also outputs like a mask that we can see is the difference between the red and the green. We can Expand this so we can see all the watches separately. Right now we are seeing nine. This is one. Why we would need this? Well, because uh, this mask can be then used to multiply all the previous attributes. Let's just do it real quick. So we have our density over here, which is that one. And what can we do? Hey, density. Why don't you get multiplied by the mask? Boom. Now the edges don't have that much smoke. Uh, we can do the same for the temperature. Temperature over here. And uh, well, we don't need a, a group. We don't need a blast. We only need a volume rasterized attributes. And Let's go one step beyond. We don't even need this one. Why? Why don't we need this? Because in outputs, this tool already creates this on its own. So we could just go here and use this for what we want. We could go into here, PDB. Very static. This is going to be a PDB. It's going to be saved into the same folder. So uh, 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 uh. let's we were doing 48, right? Yeah. So the only thing that we need is the bounding box. So all of this section is useless right now because we do have in some of these outputs that this blending part stack smoke in this case and makes it look darker, denser. I mean something to solve. Um this is meant like a little help in your simulations in case you are like, you have an eye for being perfect. And um, well, in this case, we do have the mask over here. You will see that if you go into the next source, so let's change this. Let's go into the wedge. This is zero, this is the one. Um, into the second one, we can just click here. And you will see, that it is going to have the, like the same mask. So on the overlap, everything is going to be additively one instead of twice the value. 
If you don't have like a bleeding option, you will uh, add all the values one on top of each other. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, also, in this case, I think this should be divided by four because, well, boxes. But yeah, th those solutions come in very handy. And you can do th tons of things with this visualization. For example, you could show the input or not. You could show the wedge number or not. Change the color per wedges so you can see it better. Show only the dynamic bounding box. This is very cool to have. And it works for uh, to be as optimized as possible when using the 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 tool that we use here for the bounding box and the centroid. So let's try to do that one instead. Uh, on here in the dynamic bounding box, we could just enlarge the inside all the way over here. This is just a bound. So we could okay, this is the way around, sorry. There we go. And this could be zero. So this is as tall as we want our smoke to be, and it's super compact. As you can see, if we need a little bit of bleeding, we could just add it over here and this at the same value over here. So this is the box that we could use for our simulations. And we have like the bounding box. Very cool to have it. And if we press W, we can see it has two inside of each other. We have the wedge number and we also have the CD for the colors. And this is the bounding box. But we also have the dynamic, which is the last one we made. And we have the collider in case we have the collider. Uh, let's try just to use this. So this is the, the height field. If you plug this into the geometry, it will output, as you can see, the collider. And automatically it's going to create a BDB from polygons that you can configure here. The box size is four, so let's just make it four meters. And there you go. You have an automatic uh, collision system for your simulations that can be just uh, plugged and play. So in this case, it has collision. You can also calculate the velocity, but uh, I don't really need to. So now you connect it to the pyro solver and you have a uh, small plus uh, collisions, which I don't really need in this case because uh, everything is going upwards. So, uh, let's hop in. What we need to do is to remap all of this. This was called BLAST2. Uh, so let's do a simple null and call this also BLAST2. Now they're connected. And it works exactly the same. Exactly the same. So let's reset. And if we press play, everything is working nicely. Very, very cool, very cool. We need more space on our simulation. Oh, sorry, we, something is not working. What, what is it exactly? Oh, because we had to do it with the bounding box from the optional. There we go. Now this should work. And maybe this is too much, so we can optimize it further. Look at this, all the space that there is missing. So what I can tell is that this is half, so it's only 120. So let's begin again. Aha! Now this is very optimized. So let's just try to go a step beyond um, resolution. This is eight times the size, just to keep in mind. As you can see, now we have, what well, I cannot really check, but we have 45 million voxels on the GPU running. So that's very nice. We can even go one step further. So this is not the only setup this uh, solver has. I mean, this watching system has. So let's see, what else can we do? Uh, let's just not visualize anything. So dirty old static again. Uh, let's try to go into BDB from particles. So the BDB from particles will basically, uh, 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 sorry, I want to do it again. Stop wedging tool. So I can basically, rest. yeah, I wanted to reset the visualizer. Uh, I don't know what happened over there. 
right here. Let's just connect this again because I want to show you over here the BD from particles. The BD from particles will create uh, like bounding boxes depending on our scatters. So this is extremely, extremely uh, handy. Not in this case particularly, I mean, not at least on this configuration, but we can change this. Let's set this to four. So let's change this. The point rate scale may, may be maybe eight. And maybe we can double the size threshold. The bigger this is, I think, the less boxes we're going to be getting. Yeah, we are merging all the boxes. So in this case, it's not really, it's not that great because we have a lot of overlaps, but if we have like very sparse, like one spot here, one over there, one over there, that would be very nice. So let's try to do something like that with the mask so you can actually see what's going on. So this mask is looks like this. So let's paint a little bit right over here. Uh, what I would like to do is to paint the mask. And the brush is going to be set to multiply. This is going to be set to zero. Let's increase the brush. And let's just start deleting points over here over here and perhaps even over here there we go i have three different or four different places now let's make it like this instead we don't want to have any type of points there we go so in this case our uh, wedging tool will create the three separate simulation zones automatically you don't need to think ever again when and why to do the simulations. Um, this is a plug and play, so let's just give it a try. Let's check how this looks on the first one. As I told you, it's just going to work. Uh, what I was doing here. Okay. It just works. Let's just go a little bit. Uh, lower resolution so we can make it faster what i'm using this one oh yeah i should probably change the dynamic bonding box of this one because it's another one to 120 it was this one i think yeah and over here we can see we can give it a try reset 3 million, let's go, let's play, there we go, look at this, beautiful. Yeah, Jared. So we already have different versions and we can maybe add a camera, let's try to add a camera over here, there we go. So with this camera, we can even go into first mode and just grab the camera. We could use the far clipping. Let's set this. Let's just keep this over here. If we set this to my ones more zero, it will create um, like the area, the first room of the camera where you can have like the grid to see it. And you can control, for example, linear clipping is going to be the first part. So let's change this a little bit. And we already have three different watches to play with in case you need to, I don't know, maybe put uh, cards or trees at the background, uh, lot one or lot two for the middle ground and for the foreground, lot zero trees. You never know. Uh, this could come in very handy for video games, perhaps. So let's go and see the two sides of this one and let's play around. As you can see, all the watches are being named here relative to the camera. So you will always know where everything is. You can control how they are organized. There are some bugs here and there, but it's not anything to be scared of. Um, there is an optimized version because this goes beyond, but we don't need anything else. 
and I would like to show you, look how versatile this is. Let's go to grid back again and let's see, let's try to optimize this. Well, this is already optimized. We are grabbing, these are the points, we are grabbing everything. There is a little bit of points over here, so we get the full box, the full box and the full box. But so nothing, nothing is changing. But if we go, let's say five and five, you will see all of this is missing because there is no point in simulating this. Uh, we already have what we need inside these boxes. So this detects uh, that and accounts for all of the wedges. As you can see, this is, again, automatic. So let's go back to the first room. All the settings are saved. I like this way. We can do the same thing again. And the final thing that we have, uh, this cutter is not really being used that much, uh, but the custom one is very nice and probably is going to be used over here. So we have our boxes that we can just do a wedge stop wedging tool and let's say we use custom and it's automatic not only we get divided this into the into the values called wedge but we also get a dynamic bounding box to play with why would you think this works well maybe you don't need the whole scenario to as a as um as a collider. So uh, let's go into here, into the poly reduce, and let's see what happens to the collider. So far, nothing. Um, because this is, well, this is very on top of the plane. So let's just edit this a tiny bit. There we go. Now we're starting to have something. This is our um, collision. Remember, we need to change this into we need to change this into maybe four because we don't need much more uh, let's increase this a tiny bit more let's add like 20 now let's even more let's add it like 100 by 100 so over here if we blast the um, collision and we only keep we only keep the collider. This is our collider uh, that we can totally use on our RBD. This is much cheaper, much cheaper. Look at this, 480. Uh, yeah, sure. And this is much cheaper than just using this one, which is, look, 3000. It's a lot. And if we plug and play everything here, now we have a smaller area for our collider. Well, you might need to increase this in case something like that happens. Uh, so let's add 200 by 200. And let's try again. Well, that's nice. And this is super handy, super handy. Uh, and I think that was it. But perhaps I'm going to add, add one more scenario that uh, very similar to this one. So let's have um, a grid and let's say that in this grid, oh no, let's just use this one instead uh, into the poly reduce and let's just scatter, let's say, yeah, this is okay. Let's do a BDV from particles, set this to four and let's just increase the radius all over here. Now let's use, I prefer this one instead. There we go. So if we convert this by BDB, there we go, we have 66. So let's make this bigger, even bigger in polygon count. So this is very slow. Yeah, let's go 0.5. Now look at the polygons. We have here, this is already taking a lot of time. Look at this. So we have 4 million polygons. Uh, we could use a poly reduce over here. It is already taking some time to, to load. Uh, and let's try to reduce this by 10. It will work. Of course it will work. But it's going to take some time that I don't want to waste. So what can we do? Let's do a class. No, I don't know what's that. Sorry. 
let's do a connectivity and let's call this here there we go and let's call this uh, wedge and let's just connect this over here and now our solver over here without we don't need a collider with, because what i'm going to do is just to optimize the geometry automatically automatically detects 20 wedges so let's see how this one looks Oh, this is a very small one. Okay, there are some... Yeah, there are some small ones that we don't need. I'm going to use um, a tool that I made from the CGMA course, like, five years ago, uh, which basically removes everything, all the small pieces. That's how I usually go about it. But that's what I'm doing. I'm just removing small pieces. There we go. And on the right side, we are going just to stay with the big pieces. There we go. And let's connect this one instead. So, sorry for the mess. Let's just put this down here. And it automatically takes four. Now, we can just go one at a time. And this poly reduce added here. And now we could see that this is much faster and we can iterate over all the assets. Imagine you have 100 mountains, all of them 10 million polygons. This is the way to actually go and tackle the situation one by one. You would be saving it into here one by one and then loading all of them at the same time. So that was all for the presentation. I think that I explained pretty much what wedging clustering means and how you can go about um, the, well, the whole process. If you have any questions, please leave a comment uh, right now and I can answer them. And if not, have a really nice day. So, okay. I see that some of you guys are writing. The witching can also be pushed to deadline using PDG. I haven't tried, to be honest. Of course, it's totally dual because at the end of the day, inside the tool, this is just uh, a top network. So yeah, this could be expanded to to that line easily. Just adding like an option over here. Um, that's nice to to ask because I should have done that. Um, but since this makes all the workflows really fast, I I don't know. I haven't dived in, but you know the possibility is always there. For sure. In fact, it's something that I will look uh, to it. Uh, it seems uh, it depends on what you are doing. If you are going to go about smoke simulations, it depends on how you tackle them because you could uh, reduce the density near the bounding boxes. So no, you wouldn't have any sim. If you're going to do like booleans, well, the sim is just going to be like the cutting edge. Uh, but that's with any type of boolean. And if you're going to do custom um, type of first terms, uh, no, no, no. This is not meant to divide the object uh, necessarily, but to optimize the workflow um, 
trusted kind of or per situation or in large scale uh, scale landscapes for example scattering tons of trees and you cannot just scatter 100 million trees at the same time and you scatter per chunks um uh, yeah it gives a lot of flexibility Yeah, but I think that we did a lot of things in just one hour. Uh, so if anybody, if nobody else has any questions, I think I'm going to stop the stream and this will be uploaded to the DigiLounge uh, lately. So thanks for watching, guys.